problem one, which will be our uh, first example problem dealing with binary VLE. So in problem one, we're told the data below give the dew and bubble temperature of methanol and ethanol mixtures at one bar. And then based on that, we're asked to answer a series of questions. So for all these problems in chapter eight, and then even later on when we solve more complicated phase equilibrium problems, my first general recommendation is to draw a sketch of the relevant phase diagram of your system. It doesn't matter how good of a sketch it is, just draw a sketch of an idealized system and use that as an aid or a guide then to walk you through the solution of the problem. All right, use it to check the reasonableness of, um, of your answer. Use it just as a, a basic guide in terms of coming up with a solution strategy. Okay, and so without even looking at uh, problem A, B, and C, uh, just seeing that we're given TXY data, the first thing I want to do is just create a sketch of a TXY phase diagram that I can use then as a guide um, for the rest of the problems. Okay, and so uh, in general, all right, we'll let component one be the most volatile component. Okay, and what that means is at a, when temperature is fixed, the most volatile component will have the larger PSAT, right? It'll be the most volatile. Okay, so at a given temperature, that means P1 sat will be greater than P2 sat. Uh, if we fix pre pressure, as we do here in our TXY, then for given pressure, it'll have the smaller uh, T1 T1 sat will be less than T2 sat, right? It'll be, have the smaller pure component saturation temperature uh, at that pressure, right? It'll be the easiest uh, to boil, okay? So if component one's my least volatile component, okay, and I sketch my TXY phase diagram, Okay, I'll draw a reference vertical line corresponding to pure component one. All right, so this would be pure one, x1 equals y1 equals one. Then the far extreme, all right, we'll have pure two. Okay, so in a TXY phase diagram, pressure is fixed. Okay, pressure is fixed. I need to fix pressure so I can represent my um, system on a two dimensional figure. Okay, um, so if I have a binary system, um, in a single phase, I have three degrees of freedom. So in order to be able to represent that on a two-dimensional surface, I need to specify a degree of freedom to limit it down to, to two. Okay, and so in the TXY, uh, we specify P. Okay, so all right, so uh, TXY phase diagram, uh, component one being the most volatile component, will have the smaller pure component saturation temperature. So I'll label T1 sat down there, up here, this will be two t two sat, okay. And then I'll draw in my phase envelope, okay. Again, it doesn't matter how nice your diagram is, right? We're just making a sketch here, okay. So high temperatures, high temperatures favor vapor phase, okay. Low temperatures favor liquid. In between, I have two phase, okay. I have a two phase system. My line separating my two-phase region from my vapor region, okay? We call that our dew line, okay? Line separating my two-phase region from my liquid line, or liquid region, is bubble, okay? That's my bubble line, okay? Cool, okay? There's my TXY phase diagram. Um, looking at the reference data, let's see if we can label um, some potential points of interest. So this is for methanol and ethanol, um, so let's see, I'm guessing they're, they're labeling component one as, um, methanol and, and component two is, is methanol. Okay. So this is X one equals Y one equals zero. This was our, our left reference point. Um, and so this would correspond, uh, to T2 sat. Okay. Where, you know, again, methanol is, is component one. Ethanol is component two, right? Just based on the order and convention. And down here, then, uh, pure component one, we have T1 sat. Okay. Cool. Okay, so I have T2 sat is, so this is 78 degrees C, and T1 sat is 64.2. And the data that we're given is basically um, if you were to fix composition, all right, so if we take X and Y to be the same, all right, here is T bubs, here's T do, right? 
this is the data, or this is how the data is compiled. Um, guess it's just done in this way um, to, you know, facilitate how it's tabulated. Okay. The other way you might think about tabulating the data, or how it, I typically would would imagine seeing it presented, is that if you were to specify temperature, all right, you could draw an isotherm, and then you could you know read off x1 and y1, okay? But you know so it is, okay? All right, so armed with our sketch, let me erase those last two lines, okay? So armed with that sketch, let's look at um, the problems at hand. All right, so problem A. We're told that a solution containing 30% uh, methanol by mole, so um, is flashed to one bar, 70.82 degrees C. Determine the phase of the system. If two phases, report the composition in relative amounts um, of each. Okay, cool. So one bar, right? The significance of that is just that's just the pressure uh, which we're provided with VLE data. And so um, we're going to flash it at 70.82 degrees. Okay, so what do we have here? So um, again, we're you know we're just interested in, in drawing a sketch. Okay, so I'm going to have say Z1. I'm going to have a mixture of composition 0.3 mole frax. Okay, and I'm going to heat it up until it is um, 70.82 degrees C. Okay, so you're going to heat it up to 70.82 degrees C. So then my question is, um, is 70.82 degrees C, does that put me in my two-phase region, or am I going to be in my liquid region, or my vapor region? Okay. So in A, the first thing I want to do is check my phase. Okay. And so how I'm going to do that is, remember we said the way the data is tabulated is that for a given composition, um, it provides uh, T-bubs and, and t do. Right, it provides those two uh, points of interest here. So if I look at you know, x1 or y1 is, is 0.3, okay, I get t do and I get t bubs, okay. So I get that. Yep, so t do is equal to t bubs. I apologize, I got to scroll up again. <laughs> um, so for point B, t do is 74.70. T bubs is 73.19. Okay. Okay, and we're heating up to 70.08 or 70.82 degrees. Okay, so my system, all right, is going to be found on this vertical line. All right, my system is found on this vertical line, this line of Z1 equals 0.3, right? So if I draw this vertical line um, in my system, okay, where this vertical line crosses my bubble line, right, it's going to correspond to 73.19 uh, degrees C, okay? Where this vertical line crosses my dew line, that's going to be 74.70 degrees C, okay? Cool. Well, I'm taking my system and I'm only heating it up to 70.82 degrees C. So for a mixture of composition 0.3, my temperature is less than T bubs. Okay, we get the T is less than T do. Okay, so what that means is, therefore, all right, we have a liquid. Okay, so what that means is I have a liquid. Okay, I'm going to be below my bubble line. So in terms of answering the question, determine the phase of the system, the phase of the system is going to be liquid, and it would just be a composition of uh, 0.3 mole fracs. All right, so this one isn't interesting necessarily by any means. Okay, cool. Okay, let's look at the next problem. Okay, so problem B now is what is the maximum mole fraction of methanol that could be achieved when a solution with 0.3 um, mole frac methanol is flashed to one bar. Okay, what's the maximum mole fraction of um, ethanol? Okay, so we can start with this with this picture we we have here. Okay, so I'm again going to start with a system of 0.3 mole frac methanol, 
and I'm going to flash it. All right, so I'm going to increase the temperature until I enter the two-phase region. Okay, so I'm going to heat it up until I enter the two-phase region. Now, remember, once I enter the two-phase region, okay, let me try and erase those two. Ah, sorry. <laughs> I tried to erase the temperatures, but the last section I had did is uh, uh, inserted the new page. Okay, so it doesn't matter. So keeping those temperatures on, what's going to happen is actually maybe I'll change the color. That'll make it easier to see. Is once I enter the two-phase region, all right, I'll start to get phase splitting. Okay, I'll start to get phase splitting along an isotherm. Where? I read off vapor compositions from my dew line, liquid compositions from my bubble line, right? Of a mixture with this vapor composition in equilibrium with the mixture liquid of, of this composition, right? And then the general idea is, as temperature increases, Y1 decreases, okay? As does X1, right? But X1 decreasing is equivalent to X2 increasing. All right, so as temperature increases, Y1 is going to decrease. Okay, where do you get your maximum Y1? Your maximum Y1 happens at your bubble point. Okay, so your bubble point is the point at which, you know, I um, hit my bubble line. Okay, and at my bubble point, X1, the composition of my liquid phase, is equal to my um, original starting composition. Right, X1 is equal to Z1. And so... This would give us Y1 max, the largest possible Y1, but if you were to go and do your, your mass balance, you're not actually going to have any vapor phase coming off the top, right? You're still, everything that's going in is coming out liquid, right? This is essentially a theoretical limit, okay? So Y1 max, okay, so if I go to B, Y1 max corresponds to the um, bubble point for Z1 equals 0 0.3. All right, so how would I go about doing this? Okay, well, okay, it, again, it's just complicated by the way the data is presented. Okay, so my bubble point, okay, so if I heat up until I first hit my bubble line, okay, um, you know, this is going to correspond to my bubble point temperature, right? So if I draw that isotherm across, my bubble point temperature is going to be 73.19 degrees C, okay? So T bubs equals 73.19 degrees C. All right. So now if I draw that isotherm across, what I need to find is what Y1 is at that temperature, okay? And so... Now we need to interpolate, right? I read vapor compositions for my dew line. And so 73.19. So what I would need to do is interpolate, okay? And my Y composition would be somewhere in between these two points, okay? So uh, Y1 is 0.4, temperature is 73.49. Y1 is 0.5, temperature is 72.20. Um, we have 73.19. Okay, so basically what you would need to do in, in B is a linear interpolation. Okay, linear interpolation to solve for the value of um, Y1, they would give you, so, okay, let me write it out. So I think I'm starting to confuse myself. So if I have Y1, okay, and then I have uh, T2, okay, at 0.4, we have 73.49, okay, for my unknown value, which I want to solve for, um, that's going to correspond to 73.19, okay, and then I know it, um, ah, so this isn't point 0.1, that's point 0.4, okay, this is 0 0.5, right, these two points, I have 72.20, okay, and so basically I'll just use linear interpolation, um, to solve for or estimate what that value of Y1 is. Okay, cool. Okay, then that'll give me Y1, and then Y1 will correspond to uh, the maximum possible Y value that could be achieved. Okay, cool. All right, all is good. Okay, 
So that's B, right? It's going to correspond to T bubs, right? T bubs is going to give you that largest possible Y value. And then C, just to talk through three, right? Make a TXY plot and annotate it properly. Well, essentially our sketch is already annotated pop properly, right? So, so you could use that as a reference. Um, but how would I generate this, right? So the key is, remember I read off vapor compositions from my dew line, liquid compositions from my bubble line. So I would take x1, okay, and plot that versus t bubs, right? Or I guess technically it's t bubs versus x1. Okay, so if I were setting this up, say in Excel, I would plot this column, column three versus column one, and then I would plot column two versus column one. All right, and that'd give me my bubble line and then my do line. Connect those points via line, annotate it, and you are good to go. Okay, so that's problem one. Hopefully that helps and you are able to solve it.